Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to look at a transient analysis of a circuit. And specifically, let's do a switch transient analysis where I have a switch with DC sources. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go, you know, we just keep working in the same folder here. And I'm going to open up a new page. And let's call, go ahead and call this RLC uh, switched. This just is a random name. I'm going to open up this schematic. And the problem that we're going to solve is this switched RLC network that we had solved um, uh, in the lecture notes on RLC network examples. And we're going to build this circuit in ORCAD piece by 16.6, .6, and we're going to simulate it. So let's go ahead and start building the circuit. So I'm going to put in my sources. Let's go ahead and use this time DC sources, so I'll just put on VDC, and I'm going to double click on that, and so I'll put on my 20 volt source here, and I'll put my 5 volt source over here. And then I'm going to put on my resistor, so I have a 50 ohm resistor, I'll make these horizontal, I have a 50 ohm resistance here, and I'm going to have a 100 ohm resistance over here. Escape. Then I need to put on an inductor and a capacitor. Okay. So for the inductor is symbol L. And so I'm going to put on uh, an inductor. Um, and then I'm also going to put on a capacitor. As you can guess, the part name for capacitor is C. And I'll choose the discrete C is fine. I'm going to kind of center it between these two resistors. As so, of course, I can't forget my ground, so I'll put in a ground. There we go. Okay, well, let's go ahead and zoom in here so I can get a better view. Okay. Now, before I wire, I want to put on some switches. So, I have an SW underscore T, and I have a close and an open switch. So what I'm going to do is because I have a switch, which effectively is going from A to B at time t is equal to zero, I'm going to simulate that with two switches. One that is opened for t less than zero, and it is going to close, and that would be representative of what's going on at terminal B. And the other one is going to be um, uh, closed for t less than zero, and it's going to open at t is equal to zero. So I'm going to choose the SWT open slash eval, and that switch is going to be closed, as I said, for t less than zero, and it will open at t equals to zero. So I'll put that there. And then the other one I'm going to choose is S switch close, which is going to be open for t less than zero, and it will close t is equal to zero. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and wire this up. Again, I click on each terminal of the two devices I want to connect, and I get square, square, square on R14's terminal, square in the volt source terminal. We're good. Square to bend. I'll connect this to ground. Again, when it highlights in that red circle, I know I can connect. Same thing here. Highlight the red circle, connect, connect my capacitor to ground, connect my resistor to the terminal one of the switch, connect the, the open switch to the closed switch, and the capacitor I'm going to put in between those two switches. And I'll continue to connect the rest of my network. Okay. Now I need to start assigning values. And uh, for values, again, I'll click on the R for the resistor. And this is going to a 50 ohm resistance. This is a 100 ohm resistance. Now the inductance is 10 millihenries. The default value is 10 microhenries, 10 UH. I'm going to put a 10 M, little m for millihenries. 
Uh, the age doesn't have to be here. And one thing I just thought of, I should also mention, is that if you notice, there's no space between that zero and the unit. In fact, if there is, I believe, we'll cast an error in our CAD P spice. So I'm going to leave no space here. So it's 10 M H, and the H here is optional. Uh, it's interesting that they put it on there. And the C is 10 nanofarads. So I'll put 10 N. Again, no space, 10 N for 10 nanofarads. And again, I could put an F here or not. Uh, it's, it's understood that's a farad. Then I have a 20 volt source for V5, and I have a 6 volt source. Uh, I'm sorry, 5 volt source for V6. Okay. All right. So now we're, we have all of our um, components labeled. One thing I do want to point out is that the switch, I can set the time. I could delay this to you know, 10 microseconds, for example. So when this opens at 10 microseconds, and this could close at some other time, like 100 microseconds or whenever I want. But that is the time at which this will close. We'll leave it at zero. And this is the time that this will open. And we will leave that at zero as well. So SPICE will initially solve this at t is equal to zero. This will be closed. This will be open. I'll get an open circuit voltage across C2, which will be 20 volts, which will serve as my initial condition when this closes. And I will get this um, capacitors in again and begin to discharge back through the circuit as the 5 volt is also drawing current, pulling current through this circuit. Okay. All right. So everything's set up. And I'm ready to simulate, but before I do that, I have to uh, edit my simulation profile. But let's go ahead and create a new simulation profile for the transient circuit. So we'll just call this trans, um, transient. And again, when I do a new profile, you notice it's down here. It's blinking. I need to click on that and open it. And interestingly, it defaults to time domain transient, which is what I want. So I'm going to choose time domain, transient. And then I need to set the run time. So it's going to start at zero. It's going to run to, and we ran this to one millisecond. Okay. And I can also set the maximum step size. And I can make this as small or as big as I want, but you know, this determines the number of samples that will be taken, that the signal will be sampled at. If I make it really small, then it's a longer simulation. If I make it too big, then my sampling is too coarse. So I can choose a thousand samples um, uh, over the zero to one millisecond interval. So I'll just choose this as one microsecond. Okay. I apply this. Now when I hit OK, when I when I simulate, it's going to simulate a transient response, and it's going to simulate it from time t to zero through one millisecond. So I'll hit save, and now I'm ready to run. I'll go ahead and click run up here. Uh, before I do that, let's put some probes on. Okay. So what we want to look at is I want to look at the capacitor voltage. So I'm going to put a probe on the capacitor. All right. So this is a, a probe. They call them markers. This is going to calculate that. So what I want is I want the, the voltage on the high side or the top side of the capacitor. Now, if I try to put this up here, this node is going to oh, they wire on me. Okay, so I went ahead and put it there. Uh, typically, it's going to want to be connected right to the um, terminal. Also, I, when I rotate this, I'm rotating it with Control R. And I can move it along. I'm going to connect it right there. Okay. I also want to look at the inductor voltage. Now, the inductor any voltage probe I put on here is going to measure relative to ground. So we want a differential measurement, voltage measurement. So let's go ahead and measure, use this differential voltage probe. This one here, I'm going to click on that. And this, I, I need to use two probes. So let's put, um, I guess it's my inductor volt currents flowing along the counterclockwise. So I'll put the plus on this side. Again, I can rotate so it's out of the way. And then on the other side, I'm, I'm going to put it across here. So this is going to give me a, a differential measurement across that inductor. 
And if I want, I can also measure voltage across this uh, resistor, okay? And then the other thing is, let's say I want to measure the inductor current. So let's go ahead and put a current marker here. And this is going to measure the current flowing into the, um, uh, along the counterclockwise direction through the inductor. Escape to get that. that. So I'm going to save this. And now we're ready to simulate, okay? All right. I'm kind of move this around so we can still see these. Okay. So let's simulate this. Now I'm going to hit run P spice. And if everything runs correct, it won't give me any errors, which looks like it did. Notice the window down here is blinking. Also notice that the markers took on colors. And these colors are going to correspond to traces on a plot that it's going to now generate. Okay. So the green turns out to be the capacitor voltage, the blue the resistor voltage, and the red the inductor voltage, the yellow the inductor current. Okay. All right, now, here's the output. Well, so we're simulating from zero to one microsecond. What I see is that my capacitor voltage in green is initially at 20 volts, and it oscillates, and it's going to go through an exponential decay as decaying and reaching a steady state value of five volts, which is exactly what we predicted. I also, if I can measure the period here, um, this looks like I have three divisions. Each division is um, uh, 20, or, or each division is basically uh, 20 microseconds, since I have five divisions and 100 microseconds. This is a little more than three divisions, so it's a little more than um, 60 microseconds, call it like, you know, 63 microseconds, somewhere in there. And remember, that's the period of the damping frequency. And indeed, the period we found to be about 63 microseconds. All right. So SPICE is reproducing what we found with the MathCAD model. OK. Now I can also look at the inductor current. But the other thing is that because the inductor current is on the order of 12 milliamps, which is going to be swamped by a 20 volt voltage, and we basically can't resolve it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plot to this window. So I'm going to plot, I can do add a plot to the window. You notice this select here means that window is selected. I've selected the bottom one, selected the top one. And in this window, I'm going to add a trace. So I'm going to add trace. I want to add IL2. So I find IL2, which is what I measured with the probe. And I'm going to click OK. And now it gives me inductor current. Of course, um, this is IL2. My probe is minus IL2, so the sign is the opposite of it's flowing in the clockwise. So actually, I can fix that. So let's, um, for this, let's delete that trace, add a trace. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add IL2, and I can add a function, and I can add a minus, whoops, I can put a function of minus IL2, and now it gives me the negative IL2, which is the current which will be flowing in the counterclockwise direction, which corresponds to my current in my MathCAD simulation. All right? It peaks, it jumps down, it peaks. Um, again, we're at, uh, let's see, we got one, two, these are five um, milliamps per division. So it's not quite 15, but it's more than 10, and really more than 12 and a half milliamps peak, and it has the same period as a voltage of about 63 microseconds. And it starts at zero amps, which is my initial condition, and has a steady state value of zero amps. And we see we reproduce that, which was predicted by MathCAD. Okay. Um, of course, if I if I apply KVL to my voltages and I sub, uh, sum these voltages, they should sum to five. Interestingly enough, uh, if I look at this point here, which interestingly the resistor voltage is zero, the um, capacitor voltage is peaking at about um, minus fifteen, about minus twelve or so, and this peaks up, and my KVL, when I take, when I add these two together, this is about, I would guess, 17. If I add these together, they're going to add to 
5 volts, okay? So KVL should be satisfied around this loop, as I expect. Okay. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is how I would do a switched analysis of a circuit using ORCAD piece by